It's time for Side Scrollers from Screw Attack with your hosts, Stuttering Craig. Die, 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 die. <laughs> Chad. I'm not having any fun. The plot's gone all to hell. And any second now, the outro is probably going to come in and cut us off from whatever we're. And Professional Jared. I hope your pretty little hands aren't tired, because you're going to make me a co hanger. And now. Broadcasting from the World Screw Attack Headquarters in Dallas, Texas, it's Five, The Side Scrollers. Oh, welcome back to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I'm Stuttering Drake. I'm Chad. And I'm Professional Jared. Welcome to the most entertaining 30 to 45 minutes of your video game week. It is Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. Oh my god, OMG. It's a big week here on the SA. <laughs> so big it needs two oh my gods. OMGs and abbreviations. We are so busy, we don't have time to say full words, so we are going to speak in acronyms. Busy is an understatement right now. Now, if you saw my little blog post on Monday, you're like, hey, what's the deal? How come we didn't see much PAX coverage on Screw Attack? Well, we did it. We covered PAX like a mother. You too? <laughs> <laughs> We covered packs like a mother, and since it is Wednesday and the official Screw Attack beta has begun, you guys get a chance to see it. Some of you, hopefully, some of you. Uh, by now, you have seen the live stream of uh, the new Screw Attack. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed it and goes, oh, "My balls at the floor because it's amazing." <laughs> or your jaw. makes your balls drop further, and if you haven't right. puberty yet, well, it'll take care of that for you. The new Screw Attack <laughs> makes puberty happen quick. It's, it accelerates the process. All right. So, anyways. Holy cow, we are so busy. It is the stretch run. It is the stretch run, boys. We've been uh, planning this for a long time, so it's crazy and it's exciting. All <laughs> Explosions, right. all right. You want some of that? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. <laughs> Yours is way less epic. Well, you took most of it. <laughs> True, my hand actually hurts a little bit, Chad. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, a big week this week as we have some G1s in the beta right now. Other G1s, they get stuck with uh, the version four, so I uh, I, I th we talked like that. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> now we're like, all right, the new one's out. Let's just bash the shit out of like, version like, four. In, in one hundred percent honesty, and I think everybody has kind of uh, mentally moved on from version four already because we see the future, and we know we've been working so hard on uh, on the new screw attack that the present sucks. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, comparatively. So, yeah, comparatively, exactly. So you know, it is what it is. So. Uh, we're gonna do an abbreviated show this week. Uh, we're gonna kind of we're gonna hit everything, but it's going to be abbreviated in that we're not gonna go like three stories on the news desk. We're gonna go one. I picked the best story. Uh, we're not gonna go four four foreign questions. We're gonna go three, and uh, I'm not gonna keep going because that's gonna that's like drag <laughs> things out. So uh, right now it's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for hard news. All the day's news from this past week. Hard news today. Yes. Oh, it seems like we can't go a week without talking about DLC in some form. Mm -hmm. okay. So I got some more this week. Uh, announced on Monday, Gears of War 3 is going to get an online pass system, very similar to LA Noir and Mortal Kombat. Hmm. Okay. Which means that the uh, basically for paying a, uh, a full amount of money up front, you're going to get uh, several DLC packs of Gears of War 3 for a slightly discounted price. In this case, the, uh, for thirty dollars, we'll get you the first four DLC packs, which they say is a thirty-three percent savings. So do the math on your own. Okay. And then that the DLC packs are going to start beginning in November. All right. Okay. So you just bought the game for sixty dollars, and then you're paying thirty dollars. Yep. That's ridiculous. Repeat, okay. Talk slowly, because I'm a little preoccupied today. Okay. Say, tell me exactly what that was. The game's $60. The game is $60, and available day one, you can get the DLC Season Pass for $30, which gets you four DLC packs beginning in November. Oh. So if you are hardcore Gears of War 3 lover, you are going to spend at least $90 on that game. Even more yeah. if you get any of the collector's editions. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest, like, Odds are you are gonna spend that stuff. Like if you're a fan of you know shooters in general, always the map packs, map packs come out and you pick them up. Like I know when I played Halo 2 Hardcore, I bought like every single map pack. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I spent that or more. Sure. You know on it, it's just something about it. Just like day one when you buy the game, here's another thirty dollars. Like that just 
it makes you feel bad. It, you does, know? it, it like, does make you feel kind of dirty, yeah. And the DLC thing, I don't know. Like, I don't know. They're like, it's a deal. Oh, is it a deal? You know it's a deal? Including it in the game. You know, that, that's a deal. I just don't like that it's already, I don't know. Even so, the fact that all you're getting are maps, like I don't know how many maps you're gonna get, but to them, that's worth at least half the price of the full game. No, yeah, that's yeah, so. true. That's actually a great point. Like, map packs are already very overpriced as they are, and yeah. this kind of further demonstrates that. I mean, they obviously have these maps already planned, you know? And yeah. I, I think yeah. it's, they say, okay, we're, we're gonna have another 15 maps ready to go, you know? And really, is it, is 15 maps worth paying $30 for? I don't know. You know, because what's, how many times... Right, if it's 15 maps at $2 a map, that's pretty good. Okay, okay but with that said, uh, how many times are you actually going to play those maps? I don't know. I don't like Gears of War. You know, well, okay, let's say it was Black Ops. <laughs> let's say it was Street Fighter or whatever, you know? Street Fighter maps? It depends <laughs> if they have a good mode. Like, I like when, the, you know, shooters will put the mode in of, like, just playing new maps. Mm -hmm. And, because I agree, like, usually when you when you get those map packs out and stuff, it just starts getting so lost. And, you, and just in regular, like, gameplay, you rarely play the new ones. Yeah. You know? So if they add something like that, it, it can be all right, but I mean... I'm interested to see how... Call of Duty has been doing this for a long time with, with their map packs, to see how just how their sales trickle off, or if they do trickle off, with uh, the release of these map packs. Because, you know, the first one, obviously, the first one was released and was like, oh yeah, it's great! Mm -hmm. And then now they're releasing, you know, for Black Ops, they released all the uh, zombie, it's just like exclusive zombie mm -hmm. map pack. Right. You know, I'd be interested to see how it kind of fluctuates between them. And if it stays consistent, then it's obviously working. But at the same time, even if it drops off, and let's say they only sell a million of the uh, map packs at five bucks a it. pop. Yeah, it's five, five million bucks, you know? It's like, yeah, I'll take that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I guess my, my bigger problem is just how much they're charging for everything. Yeah. But the problem is that I mean, people are going to buy it. I, I, I I'll just, tell you right now, so they can keep doing it. They're going to keep doing it because people buy it. I just so. really don't want to hear anybody telling you about what great a deal it is. That's, yeah. I, I just don't want to hear that because it's not a good deal. It's, you're, you're, oh, you can support the game more. Okay, great, but I already bought the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, we, we can have this conversation every week and over and over again, and it's going to be the exact same thing. Yep. You know. So. But if you like Gears of War three, there's a deal for you. <laughs> Silver lining. There you go. Deal for you. <laughs> <laughs> Next story. Now I don't know if you guys have been kept keeping up on, up on this from all of last week when Deus Ex came out between GameStop and yeah. Square Enix. Yes, that's awesome to watch. Regarding the Deus Ex codes. <gasps> Well, for those who don't know, what basically happened is that every PC copy of Deus Ex contained a code for a free on live edition of Deus Ex. On live is like the cloud streaming service. So basically, basically give you like a free $50 version of the game for buying it already on PC. GameStop considers on live to be a competitor because they are working on their own streaming service. So when they found out that those codes were in their PC copies, GameStop employees were told to open up all regular editions of the PC game and to remove the codes and just throw them away. Later on, hmm. uh, it was then updated to that they said, instead of just opening up and throwing the codes away, they're going to take all those copies of Deus Ex and store them in the back so that they could send it off back to Square Enix, which, according to my sources, hasn't happened yet. They just have them in the back, but they haven't been like shipped off or anything like that. Because nice. a ton of them got trashed. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, of course. Now, and taken by GameStop employees. Now, since then, <laughs> uh, GameStop, uh, some, several people had already bought the game at GameStop and did not have the code. So what GameStop is doing to make it up to them is that anyone who purchased the game from GameStop for the PC has a receipt, can bring that receipt into GameStop, and they'll get a free $50 gift card. Great. I mean, that's cool, I guess, but at the same time, you know what you're doing? They're saying, hey, here's $50 to spend in our store on a $60 game. I know, so I know. You're going to spend more thing. anyway, so, you know, great. Congratulations. I don't know. It kind of could work out better for some people, because I guess I would probably rather have, you know, $50 towards another game mm -hmm. than have the same game I just bought just yeah. on live, you know? But that's so <laughs> shitty of GameStop. Well, like, I think it's shitty of both of them. I think it's shitty of GameStop, and I think it's shitty of Square, because uh, Square obviously didn't didn't tell you know, GameStop that this was going to happen, that they were going to ship with a copy of OnLive in it as well, or a, a redemption code. So, you know, Square... Their game! Sure, think, sure, but... This, that's actually the point I wanted to bring up. A lot of people are like, oh, GameStop, what the hell, man? You can't just be going up for the games, which they do anyway. And a lot of people are trying to blame GameStop on this, but in this situation, neither company is in the right. Yeah. Like. GameStop should not be just throwing away the codes. They should have just taken all the pack, uh, product and shipped it back. Uh, and then Square Enix should have told 
or GameStop that those codes are going to be in there, or had a separate allocation without the codes. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see, did they do this to the UK shipments as well? Because GameStop's primarily a United States based company. So, you know, what about like the game, it's, I guess it's called Game in the, U in the UK. Did they do the same over there? And does Game have a streaming service that compete or that I don't competes? Think so. Not that I think so. so. Not that I don't think so. Do, GameStop's like the only people really. Sure, okay, so I don't know. It's just, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's definitely, uh, I, I th I'd say it's a pretty big story. You know, mm -hmm. just the idea, and like you said, it, you kind of flossed over this, but touch on GameStop opening the, the games anyways. Because to me, if somebody opens a game, sure. and then, I hate that. then that it's not me. new. It's, yep. it's not, because I want to unwrap it myself, so. Employees can also play them. Yeah, Employees well, can check out the new games and yeah, play Yeah, how it works is um, basically uh, to display all the games that GameStop gives them, they will take a couple of new copies and remove the disc and put it into a sleeve and store it somewhere. That way they have the actual case out on the shelves, people can see that. They'll have a bunch of sealed copy, copies in the back or stored wherever, so when people buy the game, they just give them a sealed copy. But once they run out of sealed copy and someone buys a game, they take what they call the gutted disc out, put it back into the case, and then sell that copy. Without any form of discount at all. Which, to a lot of people, you know, that's shady business because you're opening up a new product. Now, yep. as Chad was mentioning earlier, GameStop employees, one of the benefits to working there is being able to what they call check out games, where you take a game home and be able to play it, basically rent it for a couple of days, up to four. Mm -hmm. For used games, there's like kind of whatever. As long as like they have plenty of copies left, anything like that, you can take as many as you want. But you are allowed to also check out new games. Now normally how that works is that if there is the slightest like scratch, scratch or indentation or anything like that on it, when you bring it back, you have to buy it. But the problem with that, it comes down to individual store managers and how much they care about at that. Like, I don't know myself and the other store managers I worked with, we were super hardcore on that. And so if there was like a slight blemish, we made them buy the game. Yeah. Now, right before I left, there was talk of that ending. Mm -hmm. That was like over two years ago now. And that still hasn't happened yet. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's always rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. But like for going. the most part, PC games are they only... They don't, yeah, they don't. Like, it varies by store by store, but for the majority were left sealed on the shelf. Yeah. Hmm. All right, what else we got? All right, that's hard news. Okay, good. There you go. That is hard news for this week. A uh, very intriguing and fun week uh, of news indeed. I loved it. Um, I, really, I, I did enjoy that story. It's, it, it had us talking at PAX. Hey, speaking of PAX, let's talk about it. Did you like the transition? It was good. Seeing as right. as always. That's what I do. All right, so uh, yes, we were at PAX this past weekend and you didn't see a single bit of our coverage uh, because it all went on the new screw attack. Now, with that said, uh, we had a great weekend of PAX. Lots of busy uh, weekend. Yeah. yeah, very busy weekend. We had a uh, we met up with uh, the Retro Hunter guys. Uh, everybody loves those. Yeah, guys. they were uh, up in the area, so we got to hang out, and they gave us shirts, which is really cool. Yep. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, and Josh. They're really cool guys. Hang out with. Uh, I, I told you I'd sport the shirt today, but I didn't want to look like Jared because I already looked like Chad a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so uh, I actually changed shirts before. So sorry, guys. Um, anyways. Uh, we saw them, we saw tons of games. Uh, what, what were some of the games that stuck out to you guys? Um, honestly, the one that I probably liked the most is one that Brian and I checked out, was the Darkness 2. That was very, very cool. Like, Darkness 1 was such an overlooked game, and Darkness 2 should not be overlooked. Like, we got the hand-on demo, we looked at it, it looks very, very cool, it, it plays great. Darkness 2 is awesome. It's legit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like Brian's little uh, giggity he yeah. had over there. Yeah. He's like, yeah, boner. Yeah. Uh, what about you? I had like almost no time on the floor because of all the stuff we were doing, but I had like I got to play Skyrim, uh, and that was pretty cool. I messed around with that a little bit. Stole shit and killed animals. What was the game you got the free stuff from? Which, which stuff? one? The hat. That was the hat. hat. Oh, that was uh, End of Nations, oh, which yeah. is uh, from the people who did Rift. It's their RTS. It's like RTS MMO or something like that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I played around with it for a little bit. I kind of picked up on someone's game, so it's cool. I mean, if you like RTSs, it looks fun. They have this cool little like option where you can click on like it's like you can manage your troops, but then you can also like nuke areas or like send in like a healing rain on your guys and stuff. So it's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, for me, I really like warp. Which yes, is what you're gonna talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, warp for sure. Uh, it was a cool game we saw. It's done by the. Uh, it's an independent game, uh, actually published through EA. Done through a company uh, called Trapdoor. I think it's their first game. I think it is. I don't know. I went to their website and they don't have a website. Okay. Like it's just is coming soon, but there's a game called Warp, and you'll definitely see coverage of it on ScrewTech because it's a game that I played for five minutes and I was like, well, this game's really really fun, and it's it's I guess it I don't know it's uh, it's a game that is a, as linear as you want to make it. It's um, it is a game that's not gonna get a, it's not gonna get a whole lot of pub, but there's a lot of things that at packs that 
Whereas E3 is like the big, hey, Call of Duty and Mario and, and Halo. PAX is kind of the more, uh, it definitely has a more independent flair. There's a lot more In terms room of for, first look. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, got to play uh, Warp, which you'll definitely see more coverage on. Really, really cool game. Yeah. Uh, kind of a puzzle sci-fi um, game where you are this alien that warps into different things. You can kind of teleport, and you can actually teleport into people and make them explode bloodily all over the place. It's really, really fun. Um, <laughs> Also, uh, saw a little bit of Retro City Rampage again. Everybody loves. Uh, oh, I forgot that was going to be there. Yeah. yeah. Dang it. Yes. Uh, and the arcade cabinet and everything. Yeah. Pretty, cool. pretty good stuff. So you know, aside from uh, those are the two games that stuck out in my mind. You know, I'm definitely going to support uh, RCR when it comes out. Uh, Brian's Brian. It, people don't realize that it's made by like one dude, and he's had help <laughs> from some people, but like the, it's been one driving force between uh, Retro City Rampage. His name's Brian, and. Uh, he said it's probably going to be after the new year. He said the game's like ready. It's 99% ready, but um, but it won't be out until after the new year because oh. just uh, in terms for a good launch. Yeah, just in terms of a launch because uh, they, they don't want to go up and compete against like you know the black ops and such like that because then people won't have any money. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, I didn't get a chance to play Counter Strike. Uh, I wanted to, but uh, like the line was ridiculously long, and every time we like we had such a busy schedule, I'd be out there for like. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you can't even get through a line usually. Um, but so I was watching and checking it out. And one thing I was really, really surprised about is they had the only display they had Counter Strike on was console. Yeah, yeah. they were playing it only on 360. And that was really weird to me because, like, like, I mean, all the, like, tons of people have PCs set up running their game and stuff. And, like, I was expecting them to have it run on PC, and that's where Counter Strike originated. Cheap asses. From. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what it was, but that was just really weird to me. It looked good. It looked really smooth and really clean. And you got some footage of it, I know, yeah, that on the new as, site. As somebody who's never really played uh, Counter-Strike, it looked like Counter-Strike. If, if I was to think that's a Counter-Strike game, that's mm. what I would think it would be. You know, yeah. uh, running with knives in, in desert wasteland areas, <laughs> you know, compounds and such. Um, one game I did get a chance to play, it wasn't made available for a super long time, but I got one game of it. I was NBA Jam yep. on Fire Edition, and I gotta tell you, uh, just from my uh, one game, uh, it's a vast improvement over the original NBA Jam. And I love the original NBA Jam, but the little things they added to it, like really, really small things. You know how at the end of uh, the quarters that the, like the ball would hit the rim, it'll just stop immediately. When the oh, does it going? keep going until? Yes. Now they have the, they call it the rim play and such. So like okay. they added a bunch of like those little little dinky dupes that like made dinky dupes. Dinky <laughs> dupes. They're, they're really important things. Dinky dupes are small but important That's things. That's the title for this week's okay. All right. Yeah. So the dinky dupes get added, <laughs> uh, as well as some other fun things that like don't affect the gameplay. Like you can do the uh, the trick shots, like where you razzle look, dazzle. Yeah, the razzle dazzle stuff. That's my which, favorite thing. Yeah, it, it's a total show bo showboat thing, and some of the dunks, they, they just looks a lot more polished than mm -hmm. the original, uh, well, the original remake mm -hmm. last year. So, I'm... Um, Do you think you're going to buy it? Oh, yeah, well, it's 15 bucks. Okay. So, uh, you know, absolutely. Xbox Live Arcade it, title. Yes, and the thing is, you know, I was talking to him about it, and he goes, you know, the only reason, I asked him if they were planning on making, like, a recurring franchise type thing, and he goes, no, there's no plans of it, but the, the only reason why they got a remake, uh, they got a chance to redo it again, was because they, because EA knows that they screwed him over. With uh, with what happened last year with oh, it, really? yeah, with, with like, elite and all that, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 with it being uh, you know free for <laughs> the first right. edition, yeah, for the free free for the download and all the stuff, and all right. making a box title, it's crazy. Now I have a question for you, Craig. So you always speak out against like the remakes of like say like Street Fighter, mm -hmm. like you know Street Super Street Fighter and Street Fighter Arcade Edition. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Because now you're gonna be buying the remake of the same game, but they're not. Yeah, let's, sure. Uh, okay. Allow me to uh, allow me to go into a little more detail. Um, how much is Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter, for? Super, uh, what is it, eight, what did it launch at, like 40 bucks? 40 bucks. 40. How much was Street Fighter for? Arcade Edition? No, the first one. Oh, it was 60. 60? 60. Yeah. So, and Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 4 was $40? No, it was like Super, Super Street Fighter, Super, Super Street Fighter Super, Super, oh, Super Street Fighter 4. Super Street Fighter 4, yeah. And, and Arcade was? 15. 15, was, 15, was, yeah. 15, okay. So if you were to buy all those, how much would you pay? <laughs> right. Right. So, um, this is fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with going an extra fifteen dollars, especially with what I've played and the improvements that have been made. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally fine with that. It's not going to be an annual, annual thing, and they they have very much said it's not going to be an annual franchise type thing. And mm -hmm. they said, uh, which will be a new story uh, that I don't think anybody's had. They're committed to at least one update because uh, of uh, the rosters, because the NBA season is essentially not going to happen this next year. Mm -hmm. So. No, there's a blockout and such, and they're just both sides are money, money hungry whores. So. What's with all the sports <laughs> drama lately? Yeah, it's yeah. stupid. I don't money. understand sports. Yeah. Um, so long and short of it is, they're committed to at least one update of the mm -hmm. rosters. So if the if the next three NBA seasons are locked out, 
mm -hmm. then in 2014 or 15, when it comes back, they'll at least update the rosters with the new players. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I I'm cool with that. I I'm fine with that for sure. You know, so uh, it it's it's definitely a vast improvement. It's got a lot more polish and uh, it's more fun because they added the the uh, tag mode, which is something that wasn't included in the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, the which really threw off my game. Yes, which was, which was <laughs> the ability when you pass the ball to the other player, mm -hmm. you can control that other yeah. player as opposed to just letting the computer control it. Right. You can uh, call for alley-oops, which you saw in NBA Showtime and NBA uh, Hang Time. And I'm a big NBA Jam guy, and mm -hmm. you know it's definitely a huge, vast improvement. See, so. and that's, that's kind of my point. I think it always just comes down to, like... But I'm not paying $40 for it. Right, but still, I think it always just comes down to so the game. So it's not the principle that you bothers you so much, just the price? Yes, I think that's the, well, there's, there's some principle to it, but... There's a fly, fly attacking Jerry. <laughs> <Gah! laughs> no, um, it's not the principle, it's, uh, th there is some principle to it, absolutely, but at the same time, uh, the price point plays a big role in it, and NBA Jam, NBA Jam got the, they got a fist up their ass by, from EA the first time it was released, so... <laughs> I, I agree, that helps a little bit, I just... You know, so there you go, there, the there's my justification. <laughs> that okay. should be the title of the, of the show this nope. week. <laughs> fist, fist up the, the ass. ass helps a little bit. <laughs> All right. What so was the go. one that had the proposal? Old manhole or something like that? I don't remember. All right. All right, <laughs> there you go. Uh, PAX was fun. Yes. Oh, you know what I also enjoyed? I, I enjoyed taking pictures and stuff this week. Yeah. Which, cool. um, Some good costumes. I brought my camera and I forgot it every day. That's okay. All right. All right. So let's, uh, okay. So there's the, uh, there's PAX uh, as we move quite along. Uh, but right now it's time for the Side Scroller News Desk. Hit the music. Very enthusiastic right there. They right. like said this is going to be the best story. Uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> but it's, well, it's the best story of the week, and it's not in Florida. Uh, not in Florida. No, it's not in Florida. It's actually in New Zealand. Dark. So let's okay. go to New Zealand. They have beach penguins there. Uh, they also have uh, mowers. Uh, they, they mow the lawn there, right? And uh, Yeah, I've heard of those. <laughs> have you guys actually <laughs> strange <laughs> technology? It lowers the grass levels. Madness. It brings them down. Uh, <laughs> like levels, like... Grass lowering <laughs> contraptions. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, have you guys ever... Have you guys ever mowed the lawn? Are you guys lawnmowers? I yeah. have, yes. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. I know some people, they live in apartments and such, they don't do it. But, um... So, have you guys ever got creative with your uh, lawn mowing no. ability? Have you guys ever mowed anything fun or cool <laughs> into, into, no. into your lawn? Like, I don't know, a smiley face or... Uh, no. no. Who's gonna see it? Well, apparently a lot of people, because in New Zealand, <laughs> David McCoy, uh, well, I'll let you guys tell what he put in. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, if somebody mowed like a giant lamb, and then... <laughs> two giant lambs. Two of them. And these were uh, actually caught by Google Earth. Who would see it? Google Earth would see it. So now you can see it, which is great. Oh uh, he he uh, mowed two giant uh, wieners <laughs> into his lawn. Uh, this is actually at Fairfield College, so uh, it's actually at a higher uh, institute of higher learning. Oh my god. Stop looking at the Wangs, Chad. That's hilarious. It's great because like no one on the ground will ever know. They're like, it's a see. Who just happened to be searching <laughs> for this particular area of New Zealand <laughs> on Google Earth? Well, it's, oh, no. To see right when he happened to mow a penis into his lawn. Yeah, it, there, there's a lot of things that are going on here. They're just the idea that he decided to do it then, that, that they actually captured it then, and that somebody actually at Fairfield College was like, hmm, I'd like to see Fairfield College. Oh my god, two big cocks. <laughs> I'm not going there. Yeah. <laughs> That's somehow people get the schedules for when Google Earth is going to do this stuff because they have. Well, oh no, no, not the Earth because they do the van for like the street view stuff. Yeah. And like you know the people chase them down in like the scuba gear. I thought that was, That's like one of my favorite <laughs> things ever. But well, so apparently he mowed and then he actually went in and uh, he actually killed the grass, which is why it looks so pronounced. Uh -huh. Oh. So so it stayed that way for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he put a lot of effort into this. Seriously. Yes. He must have been pissed at that school. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was good stuff. So props to you, man. Here yeah, he flunked out. He's like, yeah, <laughs> forget it. That's what I got left. Yes. So, anyways, way to go. <laughs> good job, New Zealand. You, you win awesome. this week. All right, there you go. That's just real quick news desk for this week. Let's keep on moving to a little so, bit of forum questions. <laughs> so what? I was gonna make a bad joke. No, no, say no, it. Go for like, it. So they mow the lawn to make the tree look bigger. <laughs> 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 Pretty anyway, funny. <laughs> pretty funny. First up, our if, four. If, if you haven't seen, um, she's just not. No, what's that? What's that movie that I was talking about the other day? She's out of your league. Uh, go see that movie. It's really, really funny. There's a great scene about shaving your balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, with an endorsement like that. First up is one question from Ballin is my hobby. Hey, speak it up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
<laughs> Ball? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> With the new site coming out, the thing I'm most excited about is ScrewTac Mobile. It extends my time on the John by an hour. What are you guys most excited about? Okay, so I want to be a little clear now. The uh, we're not gonna have like a mobile site, right? The the, the new Screw Attack will will work on your phone, and uh, you'll be able to watch our videos through on your browser. yeah through your browser on the on the, on your phone. So it's not gonna be like you know you're not gonna be able to go there and. and it's not going to look like a mobile site. It'll look like a regular site, just to be clear. So you'll still have access to all the news and, and trailers and original content that we produce. Hey. So, but you will be able to view it. So, yeah. Is that the question? <laughs> no, no the question is, what, what are you most excited, excited about? For? Oh, for on the on the new site? Yeah. Man, I th personally, I'm most excited just about the grand scope of, of everything that we're doing. I'm excited about the new staff. I'm excited about the new trailers. I'm excited. I'm excited that <sighs> there's so many there's so many things that like. I haven't even touched on some things, right? And we're not, right. like next week on Side Schoolers, we're gonna be uh, touching on um, some other things on the site uh, right before we launch. Because um, we don't want people to forget about them. And we, we want people to know kind of what um, some, of the, some of the big things are with the new site and, and how it benefits you. So we're gonna be touching on those uh, next week, uh, which should be just in time for um, the new Scooter Attack. So there's tons of cool stuff. I'm very excited about a working search bar. <laughs> like. That sounds so rinky dink. It does, but, but it really it's so helpful. Yeah. Rinky dink, dinky doos, what is going on <laughs> with you today? <laughs> what are you most excited about? J Rod? Uh probably just the new look of a lot of our shows. Like um, without going too much into it, just like the way like, you know, the evolution of hard news, our reviews, and things like that. Teasing, teasing, yep, teasing. Yep, 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 not gonna say anything <laughs> that. Um, I like that the fact that everything you're gonna want is gonna be right in front of you, right when you go. So, also everything glows. I like yeah. That. There's a lot of glowing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of glows with, with the new screw attack for sure. There's tons of little cool stuff. So. You guys want to bask for a second? Mmm. It feels good, good on times. my skin. Well, while we <laughs> there it goes again. Yeah. Sorry. One of these days, the desk is just gonna break. It's gonna and fly it's gonna right through it. <laughs> really awkward. Flip over. <laughs> knock on the camera. From Google Earth. Yeah. <laughs> And let's just go on to a video question from Pikmin34. My human counterpart, G1 Pikmin34, would like to ask, have there ever been any moments in your gaming experience that you felt a strong emotional reaction to? Either happiness or sadness? Absolutely not. <laughs> Why are you making fun of his head crab? Yeah, dude, come on. <laughs> That's a serious problem in Half Life, okay? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I, uh, for me, probably the last last moment that I really felt like emotional about a game was mm -hmm. actually at the E3 Nintendo press conference with the we talked about Zelda. This? Yeah, the, the Zelda when they when they played the music, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the orchestrated music. That was like kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it actually they weren't actually playing a game on the screen. So you know, mm -hmm. what about you guys? Uh, first of all, I'd like to point out that I totally like the way that question was asked. It's a question about asking about your like extreme emotion done with zero emotion whatsoever. Pretty good. Uh, but uh, I don't. You know what? In terms of just all gaming in general, I think the thing I got the most emotional reaction from was actually at SGC, and that was the Sonic 4 <laughs> reveal. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely crazy. Like still, when I watch that video, you just like this feeling just over watching just. Cause we're, we're like sitting there, you know, we're all excited. We're like, oh, this is gonna be big. We're gonna reveal Sonic 4. And then just the spin sound happens and everyone goes ape shit. And like just the energy in the room and everything. Like that was like, it was really overwhelming. So it was pretty cool. That's yeah. Funny. Speaking of uh, speaking of the Iron Man, we know we did not get the uh, release date for the next game out last Friday. You can expect two games this Friday. Yep. So, uh, you know, we, we wanted to, it was busy, man. It was busy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all we can say. You know we, know, we know a lot of people are waiting for them, and we will definitely get two out this uh, this Friday. So, hang tight. Yep, yep. Jared? I've got a couple, just for different emotions. Uh, in terms of, like, well, I got choked up really bad at the end of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, which, without spoiling it for anyone who hasn't po uh, played it before, but the entire ending sequence where um, uh, Naked Snake goes to the graveyard, and with a VO, very, very powerful emotional stuff. Love that part. The uh, strongest uh, feeling of fear I ever got came from Eternal Darkness, Sanity's mm -hmm. Requiem, which is a truly terrifying game. <laughs> uh, I won't say anything more other than the bathtub. Everyone knows that scene. Uh, and then Two Worlds 2 gave me the deepest feeling of regret 
I've ever felt in my entire life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn. Uh, um, hate came one. from Final Fantasy 13. Just a seething hate <laughs> coming out of my pores. Go watch his review and you'll see what he's talking about. <laughs> in the Shiva Scissor Cycle? Ah! <laughs> All right, what up? Uh, next up is another video question from Mary Marvelite. Greetings, Screw Attack crew. I am Matt, aka G1 Mary Marvelite, and my question for you is simply this. What are some of your favorite comic book or superhero based video games? Whether it's new school marquee titles like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 or old school jams like Batman on the NES. My personal favorite goes out to The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Excelsior! That was a true Stan Lee sign off <laughs> there, man. <laughs> Very nice. Um, me personally, yeah, you mentioned Batman on the NES. Um, also, the X Men games and the Genesis were really fun mm. um, back then for sure. Uh, also, the X Men arcade, arcade games. Yeah, you, you, oh! can't, you can't just. Also, welcome to die. It's yeah. just yeah, you can't you can't bypass those for sure. <laughs> and I, I do think you know they released uh, the six player X Men on uh, Xbox Live Arcade and mm -hmm. PSN and all that, and that was really cool. But you can't quite uh, replicate playing with friends at the yeah. arcade, shoulder to shoulder, because yeah. that six player was so damn awkward. Uh, like you're just yeah dropping quarters. Well, no, there's always that one empty spot where Dazzler was. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Well, what about you? Uh, you guys named off of the good ones. I guess Marvel Ultimate, Mar Marvel Ultimate versus uh, Capcom 3, mm -hmm. you can count that. Otherwise, Ultimate Destruction was really good. Yes. Spider-Man 2 was also really, really mm -hmm. good and hasn't been good since. <laughs> yeah. Any any fringe comic book games out there that we... Uh, I don't know, I, I used to play... Oh, event 13. 13? Oh, oh, 13, yeah. 13 was I didn't play it. The Darkness? Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you want to count Darkness or not. Always, I would say Darkness. Mad World was really cool. It was done like comic style. It wasn't a face off a comic book. Yeah, though, I know. Um, I played the Avengers arcade a lot. Like, I can remember that was really cool. The I was, Avengers! <laughs> I was always Hawkeye because it was just yeah. like ridiculously cheap. You just spam with his uh, yep. arrow, yeah. And no! Then, uh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it with that. I know one. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. No, I just want to go play it. All right, what do we got? Birthdays now? Uh, yep. All right, we actually didn't have a lot because, of course, you set the weirdest challenge ever, which was to dress like the new members of the Screw Attack crew that no one really knows yet. I told yes. you. So, <laughs> it worked. For, first up, from last week, uh, this guy got it in like right after we filmed Side Scrollers, and normally we say the cutoff is uh, Sunday, which we're going to be much more strict on, but he was dressed up like Jose and he's humping an Xbox, so I had to give him props. That's Diomaru. Nice. Uh, next up, we have a picture from MOD and Shaq. And uh, that's, uh, let's see, they're dressed up as Sean and Lauren. Uh, <laughs> Sean has a wicked goatee, <laughs> it's like obviously fake and ridiculous. And uh, the other guy didn't know what Lauren looked like, but he saw bricks on her desk, so he put bricks behind him and stuffed things in his shirt. <laughs> Got so it. props to you guys. Uh, and then we have Terra Corrupt, who has <laughs> taped construction paper to his face <laughs> for Sean's goatee. <laughs> and that's it. Congratulations, <laughs> very nice, way to go, all right. So your challenge this next week, uh, we, I, I don't know where, do you guys have any ideas? Because I don't have any ideas. You always have the best ones. I know. Oh yeah. And the last time I tried to contribute something, you shat all over it. <laughs> well, what, do you, what do you got this week, Jared? I got nothing, no. No, come on, Jared. I got nothing. What do you, what do you got? Mm, nothing really. Oh, Fine, man. I'll jump in. All right. In honor of Third Strike, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, did you, did you miss that? that? Oh. He was petting me. Just, just giving a little rub on his head, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> It's really awkward. What? Uh, what are you talking about? Help. <laughs> what do you got? I'm just gonna say, in honor of Third Strike, just dress up like Third Strike characters. No. No. Come no. On. No. No. Come no, on. No, You've no, done no, Street no. Fighter no. so many times. No, 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 Not no. Third Strike. I want to see Aura. No. Well, listen. We saw Poison. We, we already okay. did Poison, That's right? True. So uh, let's do this. You know. You know what I want? In honor of NBA Jam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh -huh. We've already done basketball. We did cream of Christmas, and you're gonna get okay. on my right. ass okay. for third that's, strike. That's fine. That's, fine. <laughs> that's fine. Women's basketball doesn't count. All right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, and all, you know what? I got it. What was it the big? The big hurricane was what? Irene. Oh my God. Where are you going with Where this? Where are you are, going? Are, are there any famous video game characters named Irene? No. I want you to dress up as a female named Irene. <laughs> I'm sure there's a video game character named Irene. Jesus Come on, Christ. what are you saying? Oh my god. Hold on, I'm doing a quick Google search. This is terrible. This is horrible. <laughs> Alright. In honor Why not of just make it Katrina as Why well, would you Greg? say that? <laughs> what the hell? In what? honor? How else was... 9-11's coming up, I want you to act like a tower getting hit by a plane. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah. 
while you're cleaning up your house and shit, you know, and all the shattered pieces of your life. Pretend to be a homeless Just stop guy. and take no. a picture. <laughs> Pretend to be a rioter in London. It's officially the worst <laughs> suggestion in the history of ever. I apologize if I have so many But I mean, we can keep going. Like, you know, well, here's the take thing. Take a picture of your, your, descri- your depiction of the Holocaust. <laughs> like, I mean, what? <laughs> Why are you why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you did it to yourself. <laughs> Look, just dress as Dudley next week, all right? Okay, <laughs> that's so Dudley. Stupid. Just dress as Dudley. All right? third I'm sure he had a winch named Irene and whatever. So. <laughs> he has his space butler who I can't remember the name of. <laughs> wow, that was side yeah. scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. Well, just <laughs> So you can uh, dress as Dudley or you can dress as a hurricane. Either one, all right? <laughs> or you can dress like a band member of the Scorpions <laughs> for the Rocky Like a Hurricane song. In honor of the bad no, taste. No, 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 no. Just can you be Scorpion okay. from Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> can you be anyone from Mortal Kombat now? What? See how you just kind of link everything together? Yep. Oh, gosh. All right. So you can be Scorpion from Mortal Kombat or Dudley <laughs> or a Hurricane. <laughs> one of the three things. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Happy god. birthday to you guys. Congrats on existing. Oh my goodness. It is a busy week indeed. We're all kind of delirious and Saying it's just terrible, terrible things. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how people dress as hurricanes. I really do. <laughs> We're going to get the most bad taste picture. No, 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 no. Gonna... You can just dress as Chris Farley as El Nino. <laughs> there you go. That is Spanish for the Nino. <laughs> Remember that. Good god. All right. So that's High School for this week. Um, until next week, I uh, hope you guys are psyched. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, I'm Stephanie Craig. <laughs> I'm Chad. And I'm Professional Jerry. For High School Bye-bye.